ROS or robot operating system does not equate to robotic software engineering. When you think about robotic software engineering, probably the number one term that comes into your mind is that of robot operating system or ROS and that is for a good reason. It has been used a lot recently in industry, in academia, in government agencies and overall ROS has become the de facto standard for robotics and this does make a lot of sense when you think about ROS primarily when you're talking about robotic software engineering but if there is one thing that you need to understand it is this that ROS although it makes the overall robotics development process really easier and manageable because it's more modular as a framework but just knowing ROS would not make you a robotic software engineer in fact that does not even guarantee you that you would get a job as a robotic software engineer in the industry so what do i mean by that and if ROS is not the only thing that you should care about what are the other things that would make you a full stack robotic software engineer let's talk about that in this video ROS is not enough so i'll be sharing with you a problem focused approach to becoming a robotic software engineer now ROS is simply a tool that helps the robotics uh, development pipeline a little bit simpler and a little bit easier but it is not at all sufficient and you need a lot more tools and skills to really become a robotic software engineer so what is the primary skill the most essential skill that you need to focus on if you want to become a robotic software engineer well that is not learning a tool such as ROS that is not learning open cv that is not even programming that is not python c plus plus it's none of these these are just tools and frameworks and libraries that just allow you to solve a particular problem and that means that the number one thing that should be your main priority when you want to cultivate your robotics skills is that of problem solving you have to cultivate your problem solving ability and this is something that you can do by a few ways the best of which is to build projects so a common misconception is that ROS really makes you a robotic software engineer but it is just a tool so you have to think of it in terms of if you are a mechanical engineer for example if you're coming from a mechanical design engineering background you know these tools such as AutoCAD SolidWorks CATIA and knowing just CATIA or SolidWorks does not show that you are a mechanical engineer because you should be able to design and develop a product from scratch that is suitable for a specific use case and that can solve a real problem in in a real world application and then if you're able to do that then then you can say that you're a mechanical engineer in, in, in the mechanical product context likewise for robotic software engineering context you need to know that ROS is simply a tool and true expertise would come if you focus not just on learning a tool but also algorithm design how to program an algorithm integration of sensors control systems and a grasp of various programming languages now here is a step by step process that I'd like to share with you to really become a robotic software engineer and that does involve learning ROS but learning ROS is just a part of it. So the first step that you would take if you want to actually become a full fledged robotics software engineer is to define your goal. You have to define clearly what genuinely motivates you, which domain within robotics you want to really focus on. And this is something that I've talked about in a lot of my other videos. Watch my video title, The Ultimate Robotics Career Guide. And there I have talked about different subdomains within robotics and how to identify your niche. Uh, but the key thing to take away in this video and the thing that I would talk in this video is that in order to become a robotics software engineer, first start by defining your goal. And defining your goal would be dependent on defining your niche. So, for example, your goal could be to become a computer vision engineer or uh, designing and programming computer vision algorithms for robotic manipulation systems or for autonomous vehicles. Once your goal is clear, you need to learn the fundamental skills, the fundamental programming uh, languages such as Python and C++, which are essentially used in uh, 
controls, the control side of robotics, but also perception and planning. Machine learning primarily uses Python for the most part. And then we still talk about learning ROS. While ROS is a powerful and widely used tool in robotics, it is essential to recognize that it's just a tool. Thoroughly learning ROS and understanding its capability but maintaining a focus on solving real world problems is the most important thing. And you need to apply the knowledge of learning ROS to build practical applications related to a chosen problem domain. So let me give you a really practical real world example of why learning ROS is not at all sufficient because let me tell you something I've worked in a few companies before that did not even use ROS and they had a proper robotic product. They essentially had something similar to ROS that was a framework that worked in certain ways similar to ROS but that was their in-house robotic framework that allowed them a modular way of development just like ROS does but it was a different framework and these frameworks are essentially just needed to allow an efficient and modular way of building projects and it does not have to be ROS uh, but that does not mean that you should not learn ROS so that is the other extreme you say okay ROS is just a tool I can ignore it and I can just focus on problem solving um, but why not focus on both you take up a project such as really allowing a robot to navigate an environment and then you can start building the project by yourself and then also use ROS as a framework while you're doing the project. So you build ROS, but you do not, uh, so you build a project using ROS, but you do not learn ROS in a standalone manner, just like you would uh, do by watching a crash course or just following a tutorial, which can be useful, but it does not help you cultivate the problem solving skills. Now there are some other frameworks and libraries which might be important to you such as OpenCV or Point Cloud library for perception or TensorFlow, PyTorch for machine learning or other control engineering related uh, libraries and frameworks that you might need to delve into depending on what domain of robotics you are interested in then you need to focus on learning the theoretical aspects of the algorithm. How does the algorithm really work in a step by step manner? How you can really improve it. It could be a SLAM related simultaneous localization and mapping when you're dealing with uh, perception or it could be a path planning or motion planning related algorithm or it could be a machine learning algorithm. And you need to constantly learn the state of the art algorithms. This is an essential step to becoming a robotic software engineer. The other thing that you might miss out on is hardware integration. Now, uh, robotic software engineering roles do require you to have a certain level of hardware background and experience. And this is something that obviously can be a, tr a little bit tricky to get uh, experience with because robotics um, kits and robotic systems can be really expensive, but you don't have to worry too much about that. You can build some basic foundational skills in robotics programming, ROS, algorithms and all of the things that I've talked about so far. And once you do that, you um, can start applying for internships or part-time roles where you would have the exposure to work with a real world robotic system. And then you can gain that experience of working with, with hardware and really add it to your CV and add it to your technical skill set. And this is a really, really important uh, skill to know when you are working as a robotic software engineer. Real world testing and simulation, you also need to test your solutions in real world scenarios because as mentioned, you would be working with hardware, sensors, actuators and robotic platforms. You can design or write an algorithm in simulation and it might work perfectly, but we all know that there's a uh, there are always problems when you are really transferring an approach from simulation to real world, the sim to real gap is always something that makes uh, the robotics problem a little bit more challenging. You can, you obviously still need to learn simulation platforms such as Gazebo, Isaac Sim, PyBullet, Mujoko, and so on. And the choice of the simulator also depends on what 
application or what problem or what domain you are working on but this is something I'll talk about la later in a different video the other things which are very easy to overlook look because they are not technical are collaboration and networking now you all know that the kind of people you spend time with has a really critical role on what kind of thoughts you would have and what kind of thinking ability you would have what kind of things you would do what kind of actions you would take what kind of hobbies you have and a lot of different things so uh, you need to find like-minded people and preferably you need to engage with people who have more robotics experience than you and this is something that can be a bit tricky to do but these days it is getting more and more easy because of platforms such as LinkedIn where you can literally reach out to people, professionals, professional robotics engineers who are working at great companies and most likely more often than not people are really happy to support someone who is passionate about learning and who just is a bit confused on a certain problem that they are trying to solve. So go ahead and really leverage these two these platforms such as linkedin there's uh, discord i myself have a dis have a discord server where i used to conduct meetups on but the server still exists and you can really try and reach out to people within your domain and sometimes what can happen is that these uh, networking opportunities also give you access to some job roles which you probably not be aware of because sometimes the job roles are not really advertised by companies and sometimes they try to really find the right candidate by means of references or by means of a colleague who knows someone who would be a potential fit for an open position and they really try to do that because the recruitment process for companies can also cost them a lot and it requires a lot of time and effort with the whole interview process so if a company can fill a position by just networking and referencing and if it's a really good candidate then this is something that they would absolutely do because it saves them so much effort and it saves them cost at the end of the day so this is the number one reason to network and really try to constantly learn new things and even reach out to experts and share your problems and even show initiative that you're able to help people with their own projects so if there are some open source github projects that you find very interesting but you are not too experienced you can just try and uh, spend time really building and making progress and uh, making some minor changes on that repository and you can reach out to the maintainers of the repository and they might be able to assist you with that and in this way you showcase that hey I'm not just talking about things, I'm also building things and you'd be able to collaborate with professionals and build a really good network. And then also at the end of the day, you need to learn, focus on continuous, continuously learning and upgrading your skills because you and I both know that the current state of the art approaches in robotics and AI that are really uh, driving robotics research and industry would become outdated let's say in five years or not just five years even a couple of years or even a single year because of the speed in which these uh, in in which research is making progress especially these large language models perception computer vision and uh, robot learning so these domains are making a lot of progress and it is really important to stay up to date with the recent uh, approaches and try to constantly learn and this is something that if you do not do somebody else would really beat you somebody who reads research papers consistently would really be preferred over you who probably has good skills but is not aware of the most state-of-the-art algorithms that perform better than the older approaches the final and the most important thing that I've mentioned is that of problem solving so this is more of a mindset thing and this is something that you can just uh, cultivate by solving lots of real world problems and that this is something that you would best do by taking part in projects so if i talk about the theory of essentialism 
the theory of essentialism says that in order to achieve a goal you should focus on the single most uh, important thing that would that is most likely to uh, help you reach that goal in the most efficient manner so in order to achieve a goal let's say if you want to become a robotic software engineer you could reach that goal by a thousand different ways you could go for a masters you could watch a few lecture series online you could do some projects you could watch tutorials online and you could do a lot of different things and those things would really help you learn robotics and really help you cultivate your skills but all of these all of these paths are not equal some paths are more efficient some paths would help you learn things faster and some paths would help you learn the right things and the most important things and this is the single path that uh, the only path that we want to focus on is the one that would help us achieve the goal our goal of becoming a robotic software engineer in the most efficient manner possible and uh, the one that would help us cultivate the exact skill set that would that the industry would value and this is that of problem solving mindset and as i said you need to build projects that the companies would value and try to use these tools uh, while you're doing while you're building projects so try to build a project where there is hardware involvement where there is some simulation inv uh, involvement try to collaborate with others and do a team project so that it's more close to a real world industry project which companies would appreciate try to learn use ross in your uh, project to really demonstrate your technical skill set and your problem solving ability and fundamentals are something that you would use in any case so if i have to summarize becoming a robotic software engineer requires you to cultivate a lot of different skills and in multiple domains of robotics theoretical aspects you need to learn the right tools ros gazebo open cv tensorflow pytorch and it can be a little bit complicated as well so i have actually created a video titled become a self taught robotic software engineer step by step guide uh, i have talked about what are the specific tools that you should really focus on and in which order uh you should focus on so what are the things that you should focus on first what are the kind of projects you should build first before you identify your niche and things of that nature so go ahead and watch that video if this is something that you are looking for and finally there is a course called become a self taught robotic software engineer where i actually uh guide you in a step by step manner with video modules and lots of practical activities to really help you transition to robotic software engineering from mechanical engineering electronics engineering or software domain and really help you cultivate the right skills and there is also private community group associated with that where i am there to help you throughout your journey if you are stuck with a programming problem if you are stuck with learning some of the things if you are uh, stuck trying to make some career decisions this is something that i would be there to guide you along the way and at the same time there is uh, you have you have the opportunity to really collaborate with other students as you are building projects so go ahead and check that out on the website learnroboticsinai.com